Hey, welcome back to 2DG. Two. We've got another beer review. Three in a row, it's kind of weird. Um, today we have a collaboration of sorts uh, from War Pigs, Three Floyds, and McKellar. We have Lazarite, which you'll see a close up picture, but this is an all black can with kind of a death metal kind of design on there. Skeleton. Yeah, it's a skeleton of a warrior guy riding a skeleton, skeleton pig. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's a Bull. bright and juicy War Pigs IPA forged in collaboration between Three Floyds and Keller. So, real quick, uh, who is or what is War Pigs? So, Three Floyds, you obviously know all about them, teamed up with McKellar, who I don't really like, but they're a brewery in Denmark. Um, that has a beef with his twin brother's brewery named Evil Twin, in case you didn't know that. Um, but anyway, they teamed up and created a brew pub, uh, a brewery slash brew pub uh, in Denmark, I believe, uh, called War Pigs. So they do their own stuff, but they also feature like Three Floyds beer and a Keller beer and that kind of thing. It can't be all too bad if Three Floyds is going to partner up. Well, they own some of them. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, let's get this open. Not just collab. Right. Got the Three Floyds logo on there with the McKellar logo and then the gigantic War Pigs mural. So, cool stuff. Get that all black everything. I'm going to do a quick spin of the can so you can kind of see the logo and everything. It's just really cool. It really is. You don't see too many. All... And I shouldn't say it's all black because the bottom's actually not. <laughs> True. <laughs> Alright, let's get it in there. Go ahead. That's what she said. I hope so. So it's not hazy or anything like that. Nothing crazy, but looks nice. Yeah. No. I did get a six pack of this, however, at the local liquor store they do have like a case or two of this, so really it's if you enjoy it I can pick you up some. Nice. So it comes in a nice straw, light color. Um, it had about a mm, half finger, quarter finger, if you got a big finger, where the head dissipates rather quickly. There's almost a slight haze in it. Yeah. And I know it's not chill haze. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can definitely see the hop oil and resin and stuff floating around in there. But anyway, let's get a schmill. Okay. It. Oh, I didn't look at the stiction, did I? Pretty good. It's kind of got a slight mentholatum to it, but it's coming. That's coming from the lemongrass that I'm getting. I'm sure. Definite lemongrass. Definitely. Def. def geez, definitely. Excuse me. Some like melon characteristics to it. I'm um, getting that bubblegum yeast. I don't know if I'd go bubblegum on it. But. I would. Generic kind of. I mean. Yeah. Not right. like. Peach, but like a subdued peach, apricot-ish type like of flavor. Like it was near it. <laughs> yeah, they get like brushed up against it. But that's, I think that's key to what the whole smell is. Yeah. And there's like a generic kind of sweetness to it as well. Out of the uh, almost mentholatum, lemongrass really dominates. But everything else is just the faintest hint of. I don't know if they use Pilsner in this or not. It's light enough, but like the smell is more traditional two-row. I'm going to say two-row. I would actually agree. You're right. All right. Um, it does say... This can 7-7. Seven, seven. I don't know. Anyway. It's good still. Yeah. <laughs> actually, sorry. It was can the 21st of Definitely. July. So. All right. Let's, let's taste it. I was almost going to say it's not the most complex thing I've ever tasted, but there's a sweetness that I didn't get on the nose, I mean the level, and I'm not saying it's overly sickly sweet, but the sweetness with that uh, sharp lemon grassiness, almost lemon juiciness now too, really play well and balance. I'm not, they don't fight, let's put it that way. I think it works really well. 
So this is kind of one of those anomalies where the flavor is actually much, much better than the smell. Mm -hmm. um, first off, it's balanced by that malt all the way through, which is basically all I'm getting on the back end with the leftover flavor. We're going through. Uh, lemon grass slash lemon juice was actually spot on. Not like that bitter to lemon juice, but more like the brightness of it. Yeah. Um, you get that slight kind of melony characteristic, almost like honeydew, even though I hate honeydew. <laughs> it's close to what it is. Yeah. Um, you get that bubblegum kind of thing in there. You get some generic sweetness, and I'm going to attribute that more to like a candied orange type of thing. It's not quite as pungent, but it's not malt sweetness, if that makes any sort of sense. It's not grainy at all. Uh, here's the thing, though. Super light, super crisp, refreshing. Um, while there is kind of that yeasty, deep flavor in there, kind of like the M43, the body is a lot different, so it doesn't carry as much. Yep. Um, this, to me, I have to find out the ABV real quick because it doesn't say on the can. Uh, it's uh, not listed. Great. So, um, there you go, then. yeah, this... It drinks probably like, I'm going to say around a 6% or so, maybe 6.5. I would almost go 7, 7.5 because of the, uh, it's actually fairly dry too. It uh, strips your teeth and I think some of that's the acidity of the citrusiness, but uh, I'd say it's 7, 7.5 with that bitterness. I mean that uh, dryness. Um... Sorry, I was trying to look and see if any of the other uh, descriptions. There's had almost anything. a slight grass hay in it, just the faintest, and I think that's coming out of the lemon grassiness. It's almost like you can taste some of the vegetative matter from the hop, you know. Towards the back end, now I'm starting to get some pine. Yeah, kind of what resiny. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. So this beer actually is pretty complex. For being what it is, I I would call that it's not session white. I, I would guarantee that. I'll I'll agree with that. But I think you could drink a good amount of these. Well, I think you could. Well, especially like since it's you know. But your palate's gonna be gone after this. Yeah. Uh, a couple right. of these and you're you know. I'm stick not with saying. That. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that you do. Reviews. Miller Lite, <laughs> this and then you know Ooh. something else, but. If you did this and went back to like a Miller Lite or Coors Light, it would literally be like drinking water. Yeah. You wouldn't um, taste anything. But more so due to the fact that it's summer and, and should try at that. least where we're at, it's very refreshing. It is. It's really good. So, uh, we pulled it up on the old AB InBev rate beer. Um, for some reason, this beer gets kind of pooed on. I think it's because it's got three Floyds in the Keller with them, but... Um, Although it does only have 11 ratings. Style they give, and it's an IPA, same as the last two we've done. Style they give a 73. Oof. Overall, an 85. So not quite a stupid jump in total, but a terribly low score, in yeah. my opinion. Especially with something with Three Floyd's name on it, it's kind of surprising. So, uh, IPA. Ironically, I'm going in an 8.5. I think it's a really good beer. It's a very simple beer. That's got some complexity. I know that doesn't make sense, but when you taste it, you'll understand that the flavor range isn't wide, but there's you know a few layers to it. Um, but it's just too dry. I mean, palate-wise, I feel very puckered. It's just too dry. Um, I feel that it's not as dry as the high ally that we just did. <laughs> um, first and foremost, um, I'm going to give this one a nine and a half. Um, it's better than high ally. Uh, I can drink more of them, just based solely on the fact that it's not too scorch your palate, in my opinion. He obviously disagrees, based on what you just heard. Um, Barely. And I, and I would really. disagree with you on, on, on depth of flavor. I think it has a lot. No, 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 I'm you saying... You go from you know, okay, go ahead. A, a nice, subdued, sweet melon to lemon juice slash lemon grass... Uh, then you go to a kind of bubblegum yeast with nice pine slash grapefruit rind. I think that's a good, you know, kind of scope of flavor mixed in with the fact that it's well balanced from front to back. You get that yep. nice finish. It is dry, um, but the malt sweetness kind of follows that down. 
Um, I think it's really well done, despite the fact that it's also extremely filtered for the most part. You get a little haze, but that's just mostly due to the hop resin or resins just floating Probably. in there. Um, so it, when it's filtered, you, you generally will lose a decent amount of that kind of you know yeast characteristic with it. And to me, this is I, I would say probably a, a good amount better than high ally, and you wow. gave high ally a much better score. Well, I don't think it was only a half better. I thought you did nine and a half for high ally and eight and a half for this. For I the thought style. I did nine for high ally. Anyway, I think you did nine and a half. Here nor there. This one, I'm not going to disagree with anything he said. I'm not. When I say it's a simple beer, I mean that it's it doesn't explode out with multiple flavors it sticks in a vein yeah it's got layers to that vein I'll agree with that and I don't think it's bad at all I mean even if I could say an eight and a half that's a world class you're saying beer. though that it's a one dimensional no no no, no listen, hang on. you're saying it's a one dimensional beer with an, with an extending overall palate and I don't understand how that what makes... I'm saying is there's a predominant flavor that goes front to back and that is the super bitter lemoniness to it but it's supported very well front to back with the other aspects that you put like I think he was spot on with the front and uh, the middle gets a little more yeasty in the back you do get that sweetness and I get the sweetness that rounds out but once that sweetness leaves the side of your tongue or your cheeks it almost feels like the old cartoons with the alum where that bitterness is just drawing your cheeks back in I'm afraid I'm going to be fish-lipped on here, and I'm just not that guy. <laughs> uh, what's your overall? Overall, I'm going to stick uh, eight and a half. It's a quality beer. I don't care what uh, anybody says, but it is something that be prepared to finish with See or stick with because your palate's wrecked. See what the hop hound thinks of the smell? No. Okay. Not a fan. Yeah, well... Probably because it didn't smell like slobbery ball. <laughs> he likes to play ball. Also, he hasn't made an appearance in a while, so here he is. Oh, thank you. Um, overall, I'm going to stick it to nine and a half. I, I'll definitely get this again. Like I said, there's there's a good amount of it in my area. I don't think we'll see this again just because it's a collaboration type of thing. Uh, but definitely solid. He agreed with me on everything, but also disagreed with me on a good amount, which doesn't make Not any really. sense. But, um, I don't really see any flaws with it. It's a great beer. Would it have been the same without Three Floyds? I don't know. Me either. Need to try some McKellar, I guess. I'd like to try some just War Pigs, too, but... <laughs> yeah, I'd like to go there. Actually, they... Uh, weren't they there at this last Dark Lord day? Doesn't matter. Should you buy it? Yeah, give it a shot. Try it. It's a, it's a really finely crafted beer. May not be in everybody's palate flavor range, but did you just worth it. That? Yeah, I did. Apparently, we're boring the hop hound, so smash the like button, give it a share with your buds, ding the bell. It's 2DG. We are growing. We want to get to that 100 giveaway, all that good stuff. We got stuff coming up too. Check out our M43 video for the details. But yeah, 2DG. See ya.